So the first process I'm going to cover in this tutorial is how to use Machine's browser. Now Machine has always had an intuitive browser system and this has been made even more intuitive by having a visual element both when using the hardware to browse from or from within the software. Starting with the hardware we have a dedicated browser button to the left of the dual screen display. As you'll see when I activate the browser on a blank session it defaults to showing available projects. You'll see this in the upper left of the left hand display on the hardware and clearly at the top of the software column to the left underneath a corresponding icon. Staying with loading projects for now, you'll see the visual representations of some expansion kits I've installed, plus the internal factory machine library of course. You'll see a controller assigned to scroll through these products and the names of each library will be shown. The right hand side screen is also updated to show the name of the library and the number of results for the projects contained within. In the software screen this is also updated in the browser column as we scroll using the hardware controller. So in the right hand display we have dedicated buttons to load the currently selected project. We can load using the next button or scroll using the knob beneath the results list. Selecting the projects you require is made simpler by breaking them down into various types. Turning the dedicated type knob will show descriptions of available projects, such as club, electro, etc. Again, these are all shown in the software browser column. You'll see the types listed available beneath the current library name. Now I generally only browse projects for my own user-made sessions. While it's useful to check out Native Instruments own projects to get an idea of how a full project is constructed, they are essentially pre-made tracks which you are not going to use unless heavily edited and customised with your own input. So let's have a look at the next level down which is how to browse through and load groups. We switch to groups by using the buttons above the left hand display and pressing once gets us from projects to groups. As you'll see in the software browser column the icon now changes to the second one in the row along the top. So it's exactly the same concept as before. All the expansion kit libraries and the machine factory library are available to scroll through. And now the groups are listed instead of full projects. So what I'll do here is scroll through some groups from the Grey Forge expansion kit from Native Instruments. There's some really nice underground techno kits in here. Now you'll notice you'll hear the group loaded with a prearranged pattern. Again, these are excellent as learning tools or to get basic ideas as to the possibilities you have with machine. But if you want to just load the group without its factory made pattern, you simply deactivate the little pattern icon at the very bottom of the software browser column. So here's with the pattern icon off. You'll see I can enter my own pattern now as there's no existing one loaded with it. And now with the pattern loading icon back on, you'll hear machine's own pattern. The next level down in the browser hierarchy is where I generally start my machine sessions. It's the sounds level. By activating the 16 performance pads and assigning sounds to each, I can construct my own groups and from there begin to assemble an arrangement project. So starting with a blank new project session, you will see pad 1 selected and lit, with a plus sign telling you it's waiting for something to be assigned to that pad. So browsing in sounds mode, I'm going to stick with Native Instruments way of usually assigning a kick to pad 1 and also a second kick to pad 5 for layering and balancing with pad 1 for a more interesting result. So let's do that. 
scroll through the types, select drums, then scroll through the subtypes until we find kick. There are probably more kicks in this expansion kit, but if they are not shown in the sounds results, they are more than likely in the sample section. Sounds includes the kicks that are created using Machine's excellent drum synthesizers, as opposed to sampled kicks. So let's assign another kick to pad 5. So we have a more interesting kick that we can layer later on using the new mixing features which I'll show you. So I'm going to select at random a kick from Native Instruments Cavern Floor Expansion Kit and use it as my second kick to be layered with kick number one. It's just clipping there, you'll see one of the excellent new features of the hardware. This uh, Machine Studio has excellent metering at the top right and you'll see I'm metering the master signal at the moment and it's just clipping. So now it's very easy just to use the master volume and turn that down a bit. And let's just quickly find a kind of shaker hi-hat that we can put on the offbeat just for this example of how to simply build a quick group from scratch. And let's also add a little 16th hi-hat pattern here using the note repeat which is set to 16th notes at the moment so that's fairly simple just to hold down note repeat and enter those notes and there you quickly have a very basic 120 BPM sounding dark house techno framework now I've tidied up my basic group, changed the hi-hat sound to something a little better as we move on to the next stage of the browser hierarchy, which is the instrument stage. So far in this tutorial, I've only browsed through drum sounds, but of course, Machine is much more than a drum workstation. It's a complete music production tool and incorporates external VST plugins and displays compatible native instruments plugins visually in the browser. So now, in addition to any expansion kits, we can see plugins from my Native Instruments complete library. There's Absynth, FM8, Reactor, Monarch, and the other Reactor-based instruments such as Prism, etc., as well as Contact Sample Library, etc. Now what I'm going to do for the sake of this tutorial is quickly find a bass sound and play in a basic pattern. So I'll arm pad number four, which is currently empty and let's choose FM8 for our bass sound. There is an additional bank selector here which can limit the browser to the legacy library of FM7 or even the transient attacks expansion kit. I'll select all banks for now and move over to the second display to scroll through the instrument types and select bass. Now obviously there are far more types when browsing these plug-in instruments than when we were browsing for projects, groups and drum sounds. So we're further aided in narrowing down our choices with the subtypes and modes descriptions. This should filter out what we're not looking for and help reduce the number of results to a more manageable, relevant selection. So I've selected monophonic digital bass sounds and we're down to 31 results. I'm just going to choose one at random here called Bone Bass. Now sometimes instruments can take a short time to load compared to loading the previous drum sounds that we did, usually no more than two to three seconds. So while it's doing that, I'll briefly point out that I'm just going to enter this bass line using a single pad. So it will be all the same pitch and pretty basic. So there we go, it's a very basic FM bass sound. Let's quickly enter a pattern after we've upped the tempo a little to suit this kind of genre. A neat way of doing this from the hardware is to hold down the tap tempo button and scroll using the jog wheel in 1 BPM increments. So we're up to 127 BPM as you can see at the top of the software display. There are of course many clever ways to enter full melodic and harmonic content with the machine. But I'm going to leave things such as keyboard mode, chord and scale entry for later on in this tutorial. 
So now we move on to a part of the browser that requires a bit more knowledge of how machine sounds are built. This is because we are now going to browse and load effects. Once again, you'll see that any compatible Native Instruments plugin that contains effects is visually shown in the browser display. So we now have EQs and reverbs from Native Instruments Complete Library in addition to specialist effects such as Driver. Now let's add an effect such as a delay to our offbeat shaker hat sound to demonstrate how this works. First of all, select the pad containing the sound you want to add an effect to. And now I'll come out of browser mode by turning off the toggle button and you'll see a left to right signal path chain that makes up our shaker sound. You'll see it actually starts off as a synthesized snare sound and then is frequency modulated by a second effect to get the softer shaker effect. Using the buttons above the right hand display, we can move along the signal path chain and highlight the various stages until we come to the empty slot indicated by the plus sign. This is where we are going to load our delay effect. The order of these effects can be easily changed as I will demonstrate later in this tutorial. So I'm looking for a very quick and basic delay for this example. So let's go into machine's own factory effects and select delay in the types menu. Then in subtypes, let's select multi-tap delay and there are four results. Let's load the first one named bright and wide. Now let's quickly try and make our very ordinary bass sound a little more interesting. Let's select the pad and let's choose something from Native Instruments Distortion and Filter plugin Driver. Just going through these at random, that's a bit rougher. Okay, let's also add a delay to that. Once again, it requires an additional bit of thinking and coming out of browser mode to make sure you are loading the effect into the intended part of the signal chain. Our final browser hierarchy element is the sample library. In addition to the many synthesized sounds we can choose from, we have a vast choice of sample drums and one-shot stabs, buzzes, chords, etc. You may in addition build up your own custom sample library using machine sampling capabilities, which we will cover later on. It's important to remember some expansion kits will contain both synthesized drums using machine's sophisticated drum modeling synths and sample drums. The former will be found when browsing for sounds, the latter when browsing for samples. For now, let's quickly browse and load a one-shot sample. Something like a techie stab from Cavern Floor Expansion Kit will do for this example. Let's try a few by using the load next button. Okay, that's a better starting point. Let's quickly add an effect. First of all, come out of browse mode to check the signal path chain and scroll along to the empty slot. Let's load a ping pong delay for a bit of depth to this very unnatural dry sample. And let's continue by adding another effect in the next empty slot, something like a filter to take the edge off and add some movement. Bye. 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 
Now the final part of the browser we need to look at is how to access the machine's internal instruments, i.e. its sampler and drum modeling synths, and also external VST plugins that are not part of the Native Instruments family, from vendors such as UAD, Waves, etc. To do this we hold down Shift while pressing the browser simultaneously, and you'll see we have very different options than from our regular browser mode. We have an attribute control, this selects between instruments or effects. And then we have a control named Vendor. And this is where we can select to browse through internal machine instruments or effects, or other native instruments, sounds or effects, or any external VST manufacturers that have been scanned by a machine upon startup. Within the software preferences, you'll have a plugin section, and it's here that you can see all the VST plugins that have been successfully scanned by a machine and ready for use. Accessing this part of the browser using the software page is simply done by clicking on the plus sign in the sounds parameter once you have a slot activated. Here you'll see a drop down menu showing again the same vendor options and the internal machine and native instruments options for the browser. Here I'm going to load an instance of UHE's Bazel Soft Synth. And you'll see it has pages of parameters and you can double click on the name of the plugin to get the GUI up for editing if you prefer to do it that way. Okay, so to finish this in-depth look at the browser, we can switch over to the software and quickly remind ourselves that everything is mirrored from changes made using the hardware. You'll see the icons at the top denoting projects, groups, sounds, instruments, effects and samples, and importantly to the right of those icons, we have indicators for either the global library, which is everything compatible from native instruments and machines internal factory library, and a user icon, which is where you can browse and load your own projects, groups, samples, etc. In addition, you can come out of the library altogether and import files from your computer's file system. Finally, below the type and subtype descriptions is a handy search bar to locate specific library elements by name.